Bells in the morning. At first they were grotesque shapes, nothing more. Then they became drops of acid, cutting the scum of his thick, dreamless sleep. Finally he knew they were words, but they carried no meaning. Kramer, Murphy was saying. Let's go, Kramer, wake up. Let's go, Kramer. Through sleepy paste in his mouth, he swore at Murphy. Then the wind hit him blew cold as Murphy pulled the raincoat away from his face and chest. You sure like to sleep, don't you, kid? Murphy was looking at him in that faintly derisive way. Kramer was awake, moistening the roof of his mouth. All right, he said. All right, I'm all right now. Squirming, he sat up against the dirt wall of the hole slowly, like an old man. His cold legs sprawled out, cramped in their mud-caked pants. He pressed his eyes, then lifted the helmet and scratched his scalp, and the roots of his matted hair were sore. Everything was blue and gray. Kramer dug for a cigarette, embarrassed at having been hard to wake up again. Go ahead and get some sleep, Murphy, he said. I'm awake now. No, I'll stay awake too, Murphy said. Six o'clock. Light. Kramer wanted to say, all right then, you stay awake and I'll go back to sleep. Instead, he let his shivering come out in a shuddering noise and said, Christ, it's cold. It was in Germany, in the Ruhr. It was spring and warm enough to make you sweat as you walked in the afternoon, but still cold at night and early in, in the early morning. Still too cold for a raincoat in a hole. They stared toward where the enemy was supposed to be. Nothing to see. Only a dark area that was the plowed field and then a light one that was the mist. They threw in a couple about a half hour ago, Murphy was saying. Way the hell off, over to the left. Ours have been going over right along. Don't know why they've quit now. You slept through the whole works. Then he said, don't you ever clean that? And he was looking in the pale light at Kramer's rifle. Bet the son of a bitch won't fire. Kramer said he would clean it, and he almost said, for Christ's sake, lay off. It was better that he didn't, for Murphy would have answered something about only trying to help you, help you, kid. And anyway, Murphy was right. Might as well make some coffee, Murphy said, cramming dirty hands into his pockets. Smoke won't show in this mist. Kramer found a can of coffee powder, and they both fumbled with clammy wet web equipment for their cups and canteens. Murphy scraped out a hollow in the dirt between his boots and put a K-ration box there. He lit it, and they held their cups over the slow, crawling flame. In a little while, they were comfortable, swallowing coffee and smoking, shiv shivering when fingers of the first yellow sunlight caressed their shoulders and necks. The grayness had gone now. Things were color. Things had color. Trees were pencil sketches on the lavender mist. Murphy said he hoped they wouldn't have to move out right away, and Kramer agreed. That was when they heard the bells. Church bells. Thin and feminine in tone. Quavering as the wind changed. A mile, maybe two miles to the rear. Listen, Murphy said quietly. Don't that sound nice? That was the word. Nice. Round and dirty. Murphy's face was relaxed now. His lips bore two black parallel lines, marking the place where the mouth closed when Murphy made it firm. Between the lines, the skin was pink and moist, and these inner lips, Kramer had noticed, were the only part of a face that always stayed clean, except the eyes. My brother and me used to pull the bells every Sunday at home, Murphy said. When we was kids, I mean, used to get half a dollar apiece for it. Son of a bitch, if that don't just that if that don't sound just the same. Listening, they sat smiling shyly at each other. Church bells on misty mor mornings were things you forgot sometimes, like fragile china cups and women's hands. When you remembered them, you smiled shyly, mostly because you didn't know what else to do. Must be back in that town we came through yesterday, Kramer said. Seems funny they'd be ringing church bells there. Murphy said it did, it did seem funny, and then it happened. The eyes got big, and when the voice came 
It was small and tense, not Murphy's voice at all. Reckon the war is over? Something fluttered down Kramer's spine. By God, Murphy. By God, it makes sense. It makes sense, all right. Damned if it don't, Murphy said, and they gaped at each other, starting to grin, wanting to laugh and shout to get out and run. Son of a bitch, Murphy said. Kramer heard his own voice, high and babbling. That could be why the artillery stopped. Could it be this easy? Could it happen this way? Would the message come down from headquarters? Would battalion get it from regiment? Would Franchetti, the platoon runner, come stumbling out across the pl this plowed field with the news? Franchetti, waving his pudgy arms and screaming, Hey, you guys, come on back. It's all over. It's all over, you guys. Crazy. Crazy. But why not? By God, Murphy, do you think so? Watch for flares, Murphy said. They might shoot flares. Yeah, that's an idea. They might shoot flares. They could see nothing, hear nothing, except the faint silver monotony of the bells. Remember this. Remember every second of it. Remember Murphy's face and the hole and the canteens in the mist. Keep it all. Watch for flares. Remember the date. March something. No, April. April something, 1945. What did Myers say the other day? Day before yesterday. Myers told you the date then. He said, what do you know? This is good. Kramer swallowed, then looked at Murphy quickly. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. We're wrong. He watched Murphy's smile grow limp as he told him. Myers, remember what Myers said about Good Friday? This is Easter Sunday, Murph. Murphy eased himself back against the side of the hole. Oh yeah, he said. Oh yeah, sure, that's right. Kramer swallowed again and said, Kraut civilians probably going to church back there. Murphy's lips came together in a single black line, and he was quiet for a while. Then, stubbing his cigarette in the dirt, he said, Son of a bitch. Easter Sunday.